This begins lesson three in the cell unit for biology students at Limestone Community High School in Mrs. Stout's class. In this lesson, we will talk about the parts of the animal cell and what they do, as well as the parts of the plant cell. And there will actually be more than one recorded lesson on the anatomy and physiology. Today we're really just going to focus mostly on the anatomy, so labeling the parts on the diagrams that are in your note packet. And then separately there will be a different lesson that looks at the physiology. Make sure that you're able to connect the two um, as going together. First of all, this is an animal cell. For your test, you will need to be able to identify some of the major differences when looking at an animal cell and a plant cell. Something they have in common is the nucleolus, or excuse me, the nucleus. This is one of the largest organelles in the animal cell, and it's usually one of the easier ones to identify. In this diagram, the nucleus is looking at this large purple cylinder object, and what color am I going to grab? We'll just do black. Um, but I, I also don't want you to just know the nucleus. I want you to know the parts of the nucleus as well. The very outside part of the nucleus is the nuclear envelope, and it is four layers thick. It has a lot of holes in it called nuclear pores, and those allow material to enter and exit the nucleus from the rest of the cell. At the very center of the nucleus is going to be a darker staining nucleolus. The nucleolus is actually what produces another organelle called the ribosomes, which we'll get to in a bit. And also in the nucleus are these long tangled strands of DNA called chromatin or chromatin. I don't care which way you say it, as long as you know that they are long tangled strands of DNA. And this is the um, shape of DNA in most cases, in long tangled strands. And all of those together are part of the nucleus, which is going to be your, kind of like your brain or your control center of the cell. We have a centriole pair, and the centriole pair is involved in cell division. When cell division happens, these two different centrioles will migrate to opposite poles of the cell and essentially pull the cell apart. We have smooth ER, which ER is just an abbreviation for endoplasmic reticulum. It's important that you know endoplasmic reticulum. And also when you're writing it, make sure you don't just write it as smoother, that you actually put ERs you know, separate from the word smooth. Smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum are involved in making um, proteins. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not have ribosomes on it. Rough endoplasmic reticulum does have ribosomes on it. And as you can see, it is a folded up membranous organelle that actually connects the nuclear envelope to the plasma membrane of the cell. We have the ribosomes. There are also free ribosomes, and there are also um, ribosomes that are attached to the rough ER. In fact, that's why it's called rough ER, because it looks like it's rough. Ribosomes are involved in actually putting proteins together, and remember, ribosomes are made in the nucleolus. We have the very outermost part of the animal cell, which is the plasma membrane. And the plasma membrane kind of acts as the gateway to the cell. It controls what comes into and what has to go out of the cell. We have a mitochondrion or mitochondria, and it's this kind of jelly bean looking structure. There's a couple of them in this cell. And you'll always know when looking at various diagrams of an animal cell, when you're looking at a mitochondria because it's going to have this squiggly part on the inside. And that's because the mitochondria is actually made up of two membrane, two membranes, excuse me. It's made of the outer membrane, just like all organelles in a eukaryotic cell, and then a highly folded inner membrane that is called the cristae. Um, mitochondria is involved in releasing energy, and it's actually on this cristae as to where the energy releasing processes happen. We have a Golgi complex. Now the Golgi can be called the Golgi complex, also known as the Golgi apparatus, 
also known as the Golgi body. Or, like, I don't know, Kanye, it's just the Golgi. You kind of know which one you're talking about. Um, the Golgi complex or Golgi body is responsible in packaging up these newly made proteins from the rough ER. It puts a membrane around them and either sends them somewhere else in the cell or completely ships them out of the cell, depending on what's needed. So the Golgi is a series of closely stacked, flattened membrane sacs. So you can see the Golgi here. Um, there's some Golgi over here as well. It's kind of like when you go to the grocery store and there's those series of plastic bags all flattened together. Well, when they're needed, you open one up and you put your stuff in and take it with you. It's the same thing. Next, we have a lysosome. The Latin base word lys, L-Y-S, means to destroy or to split. So a lysosome is going to be an organelle that travels around the cell and destroys or digests um, old or worn out cell parts or damaged cell parts. So your lysosomes are kind of like your garbage men of the cell. They clean it up. Part of the cytoskeleton is going to be microtubules and microfilament. Easy way to remember the difference between the two is a microtubule is a thin, hollow protein fiber, and a microfilament is a thin, solid protein fiber. And the parts of the cytoskeleton, the microtubules and microfilament, microfilaments are involved in organelle support. They just kind of keep the organelles in their shape and keep them together and where they're supposed to be. In this image we show a vacuole being formed. The plasma membrane is folding in on itself to create a vacuole and a vacuole is involved in storage. And there can be lots of different types of vacuoles in animal cells. There can be a waste vacuole, there can be a food vacuole, there can be a water vacuole, just all kinds. And in this generic image of an animal cell, we have a flagellum. Also, you could call it a flagella. One is plural, one is um, singular. So it's not always present. For example, we are animals and we have animal cells, but our skin cells don't have a flagella. A flagella is actually not a separate part. It's really just an extension of the plasma membrane, and you can see how it all comes out. So that is the animal cell. The plant cell, as you can see, looks very similar, and there are a lot of similarities between the two um, when it comes to structures, but there are some also significant differences. So first of all, we need to know that this is a plant cell, so go ahead and label it as such. Again, we're going to start with the nucleus, and I don't want you to just know the nucleus, I want you to know the parts for this as well. We have the long tangled strands of DNA, known as the chromatin. We have the darker staining nucleolus in the center that's responsible for creating ribosomes. And then we have the nuclear envelope, which is four layers thick around the outside. And it will also have those nuclear pores. So you might want to add nuclear pores. And those are the holes in the nuclear envelope that allow material to pass into and out of the nucleus from the rest of the cell. We have a centrosome. The centrosome is involved in cell division. And instead of a plant cell pulling itself apart, which is how an animal cell divides, the centrosome actually migrates to the center of the cell. And when it's dividing, it kind of, it kind of cuts itself in half. It forms what is known as an equatorial plate. Again, we're going to have rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So we can still abbreviate this rough E, R, and smooth E, R. Again, rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not. It's the highly folded membrane that attaches from the nuclear envelope to the outer membrane of the cell. Again, just like in the animal cell, we have the Golgi. Now here it's labeled as Golgi apparatus. And remember, it can be Golgi apparatus, Golgi body, Golgi complex or again, the Golgi, but it's all the same thing. It's a series of flattened, closely stacked membrane sacs that's used to package up newly made proteins and fats. We have the ribosomes, which again are made, are involved in making proteins and putting proteins together. Proteins are important because they are what make 
cells work the way they do and look the way they do. You know, proteins are what give you blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes or one green eye and one blue eye. Proteins are what make your, um, your red blood cells look the way they do and work the way they do. Proteins are what make somebody, you know, allergic to bee stings, whereas somebody else might be allergic to peanuts, whereas somebody else might not be allergic to anything. So proteins are the basis of all of your structure and function. They're the way your body looks and works. In the plant cell, we are going to have one large central vacuole. Remember, a vacuole is for storage. Now, this says that there's also tonoplasts. You don't need to know that, so we don't need to worry about labeling it. We have chloroplasts, and the chloroplasts are going to contain chlorophyll in our green plants, and this is going to be the site of photosynthesis, so your energy. But we're also going to have mitochondria. Not as many as in an animal cell, but we're still going to have it, and we're still going to have that highly folded inner membrane called the cristae. Um, with the plant cell, we will have the plasma membrane that encircles the whole plant cell, and again, it's going to be responsible for allowing materials to enter and exit the cell from the rest of the environment. We have a peroxisome, which is very similar to the animal cell's lysosome, and it's like the garbage man. It goes around and cleans up parts of the cell. Again, we're going to have the cytoskeleton, and we don't need to worry about intermediate filaments, so we're going to cross those out. An intermediate filament just means it's partially filled and partially hollow. But for now, I just want you to focus on microfilaments. Remember, those are solid protein fibers for support, and microtubules are hollow protein fibers for support. And then the rest of the material is pretty much all the same thing. A plant cell is going to be surrounded by a rigid, thick cell wall. And the composition of that cell wall is going to vary depending on which type of um, cell you're dealing with. So we have a cell wall, and then you can see that there are channels here extending between these two cells, and we have an, another plant cell next to it. And that channel would be a plasma desmata. And what happens here is this is how things like water can travel from the roots of a plant all the way up through the very tip top. You know, it travels through this pretty rigid cell wall. So the parts of a plant cell that you will find in a plant cell but not in an animal cell, the big ones that I want you to focus on are the cell wall and the chloroplast and chlorophyll. And that is the end of lecture three.